Let's have a bunch of gambling addicts. Let's have a bunch of porno addicts and drug addicts. Don't you see that we absolutely need repentance? In fact, not even a child will contest and say, you know, this is the right road. They say, no, we need to repent. Well, the Messiah is coming. And so he says in the eternal gospel, worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of living water. Meaning there are living water that the Lord has created for you. Not the polluted waters of pornography that you see, or that stuff and that vulgarity that spews from Hollywood. He says, repent, the Messiah is coming. Precious people, time is absolutely out. Time is absolutely over. I'm finishing up, and I'm reading Revelation chapter 14. I'll start now at verse 8, because we read from verse 6, and we read verse 7. Because they don't read the Bible in your churches at all. They just, they just give you motivational speaking, and they make you feel good. And then they'll surprise you that day when you wake up in hellfire because you found out that, oh, my God has zero tolerance to sin, but my pastor didn't tell me that. My pastor didn't tell me the Lord would judge me for sexual sin. My pastor didn't tell me that the idols in my life, Jesus, who died for me, was for a holy salvation, not an unholy salvation. In fact, salvation without holiness, that's another religion. Salvation without righteousness, that's another religion. Who deceived you late, sir? Who told you that you could receive Christ Jesus and live any way you want without consequence? Who told you that? That could be nowhere else in the pit of hell. That the devil surprise you on that day when you wake up in the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 14 verses 6 and 7, the eternal gospel proclaims the fear of God. The Lord is asking us to return back to the Lord in fear and in honor and reverence. Meaning, we need to stop the casual relationships with the Lord. We, we need to praise the Lord. Thank you so very much. The Lord bless you. He's saying we need to stop the compromise with the world. When you look at the way the church lives, and then you see the way the rest of the world lives, right here in the United States of America, right here at Lancaster, you say, what is the difference? Where is the power of the gospel? The church is in sexual sin. The world is in sexual sin. The world is loving money. The church is loving money. The world is wearing mini skirts. You see mini skirts in the house of the Lord. He sent the gospel that we would live our lives in such a way that it would cause change and repentance in other people's lives. The Lord sent us out, Christ Jesus, as the light and the salt of the gospel not to be overcome by sin because we were supposed to evangelize the world. But when you look at the church, the church has been evangelized by the world, looks like the world, talks like the world, and acts like the world. And now you want to praise the Lord, Lord bless you too. And then you wonder why it is that people are leaving